Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. How crazy am I? For two reasons. First of all, it's 35 degrees outside, and I'm making a video outside. <laughs> it's the first time I've been outside. I just stepped out onto my balcony, and that's as far as I'm going outside today if I can help it. But I don't know how it's going to go. I might have to take uh, breaks and go in and cool down in the air conditioning and come back and finish up, but we'll see how it goes. That's the first example of crazy behavior today, but here's the second one. I'm planning to participate in this year's Booktubeathon, which goes from midnight Monday, July 30th to midnight Sunday, August 5th. Why is that crazy? Uh, on August 7th, I fly back to Canada to get married. I'm probably going to be very busy that week, but I'm going to try. It'll be my first readathon of any kind. I don't believe in readathons. I've, my philosophy is, or my practice is, that I, my reading time is always maxed out. And to try to do any more than what I do comfortably would just kind of make me sick. But for some reason, this one kind of appeals. This is my first year on BookTube where, uh, at this time of year, I joined in maybe August, the end of August, I can't remember, September last year. So this is my first one. All the links to all this stuff uh, that Ariel Bissett has planned is, will be in the show notes and the prompts. There's seven prompts. The first prompt is let a coin toss decide your first read. Okay, so I will do that at the end. I hope I remember. <laughs> what are heads and tails in Japanese coins? I have no idea. We'll figure it out. Uh, the second challenge is read a book about something you want to do. I'm not very ambitious in the doing department, so the only thing I could remotely think of that would lend itself to a book on that topic that I have, because I don't want to spend any money acquiring new books for this booktubeathon, is I would like to become better at speaking Japanese. My Japanese sucks, and I have dozens of books on the topic, self-help, textbooky things, but one that would seem to me would be quite readable is and uh, I've never even taken the uh, book off price tag off. Making Sense of Japanese, What the Textbooks Don't Tell You by Jay Rubin. And if I'm not mistaken, Jay Rubin, yeah, he is uh, Murakami's translator, that's right. And he also wrote the 800-page uh, biography of Emperor Meiji that I read from cover to cover about 12 years ago. So this is his kind of guide to how to master Japanese and things that the other textbooks don't tell you. I trust him, and I hear this is a really good book, and it's short, about 160 pages. So this is something that I want to do, become more fluent in Japanese, and maybe this book will help. So that'll be one of the ones I flip a coin about. Prompt number three, read and watch a book to movie adaptation. This one I'm going to combine with Adam of Memento Mori's book to film club. And the August selection is Lord of the Flies. So I am going to read the novel. It'll be my third, maybe fourth time, but it's been 20, 25 years since I read it the last time. And watch for the second or third time the 1960-something black and white movie. Because those are the two texts for this month's book club. So killing two birds with one stone. So why don't I flip a coin between those two? Making Sense of Japanese and Lord of the Flies. I don't think I know how to flip a coin. It's kind of like whistling and knowing right from left. There's a lot of basic skills in life I've never mastered. <laughs> so first of all, with Japanese coins, what's the head and what's the tail? There's 10 yen, front and back. So let's say the front would be, say, head and back would be tails. And now, am I going to throw it over the balcony? I'm really stupid about this kind of stuff. If I throw it up in the air, I will never find it. So I'm just going to do a uh, girly toss. Uh, see, I almost lost it. And it is. Oh. <laughs> see? I didn't say which was which. So maybe I did and I've already forgotten. So making sense of Japanese will be heads. And Lord of the Flies will be Tails. Okay, let's try this again. Throw it up. Uh. 
and it is heads. So I will be reading Making Sense of Japanese first. I will start that at midnight on June 30th, or more likely when I wake up at 4 or 5 in the morning. So I'm really looking forward to uh, trying that. I usually read uh, books, many books at one time, but for this book Tubathon, I'm actually going to try reading them in sequence because I haven't done that for so long. Uh, not completely, but maybe the first two I'll read one and then another. Well, actually, sorry, I forgot to say, Lord of the Flies I will do as an audiobook. I will follow along in the text, but I, t in order to get through, try to get through seven books, I'll probably do most, and because I'm quite familiar with the book, um, I will probably do most of it on audio only, not following along on the text. So, my face is red not from drinking wine, but because it's 35 degrees out here, people! Prompt number four, read a book with green on the cover. I have many choices. Because I'm the Empress of Bailing, although I'm getting better or worse with that. I haven't been bailing as much. I don't know if that's good or bad. I think it's neither good nor bad. But it's because I'm doing so many buddy reads, I'm less likely to bail with buddy reads. And so I haven't bailed on very much in the last few months. But these ones, I'm not going to be buddy reading any of these because I won't have time to do buddy reads. I'm just going to be reading. So I've chosen maybe three with green covers, and the longest one I will attempt first. And that way, if I get partway in and bail, the, the replacement books will be of fewer pages. <laughs> so at 249 pages, my first choice, Rachel Cusk's Outline, which has been, it's not a new book, but it's really been popular on BookTube recently. Curtis of Curtis Books and Books really loved it. He said he didn't like the next one in the series as much, but he really loved this one. That's my memory of his comments. Somebody else just, uh, I've forgotten who it was, but somebody else did, just hauled it today and maybe other people. I've had this for a couple years. Rachel Cusk is technically Canadian in that she was born in Canada, but she's lived in England since she was a toddler. So this was nominated, made the shortlist for the Giller Prize and probably other awards in Canada. And I have a feeling I'm either going to love it or hate it, and I will know within 20 pages. But I'm really looking forward to finally trying it. And there's the green. It's kind of a limey green on the cover. I forgot to say that I do have a backup for the Japanese book too, although I expect that I'm not going to bail on the Japanese book I told you about by Jay Rubin. But I also have this one, 13 Secrets for Speaking Fluent Japanese by Giles Murray. Next, at uh, 164 pages, is the one I just talked about in my Not an Unboxing video. Lydia Cassett, Reading the Morning Paper, by Harriet Scott Chessman. One of my subscribers commented that she read it and really liked it. And it has green on the cover. Set in 19th century Paris, and it's about the relationship between the celebrated Impressionist painter Mary Cassett and her sister Lydia. Looks like it might be a little precious, but it has deckled edges, people. <laughs> and the third one is just over a hundred, it's 130 pages. We Think the World of You by J.R. Ackerley. J.R. Ackerley was a gay writer in the UK. He died in the 1960s, or maybe 1970s. I've read his memoir, My Father and Myself, and it's one of the best books on homosexuality I've ever read. And I haven't read any of his fiction. The green cover with a little bit of a coffee book stain, coffee stain or something on it, but beat up old penguin, I'll definitely be writing in the margins on this. So I'm only going to read one of them for the challenge, but I've got three, two more in reserve. <laughs> read a book while wearing the same hat the whole time. I don't have a hat, I suppose I'm going to go out and buy a cheap hat just to, just to join in the fun, but it always messes up my hair. So I don't know which book I'll read with a hat, I'll figure that out later, and I don't have a hat to show you today. so. I will do it, though. Read a book with a beautiful spine. In terms of the books that I have unpacked, which is, you know, only about 20%, there's only one that really qualifies as a beautiful spine. Anosh Irani's The Parcel. And there is the spine. Isn't that gorgeous? This is a booktube darling, particularly Eric Carl Anderson and What Camel Reads. Both loved it. And it is about the Hijra in Bombay, India. The author is Canadian, lives in Vancouver. 
It's a little bit longer than I wanted to take on for a one-week reading challenge, but I've been dying to read it ever since those guys started raving about it. To just, just shy of 300 pages. I think I can do it. And I'll talk about my real realistic goals for this readathon when I finish going through the prompts. But there you go. Gorgeous spine. And the seventh and final prompt is read seven books. So I have talked about green on the cover, book about something you want to do, beautiful spine, film adaptation. So that's, <laughs> that's four. So I need three more. So here is my short list and I will tackle these probably in this order. I am committed to reading a biography of E.F. Benson in early August. The Life of E.F. Benson by Brian Masters. I'm doing this as a buddy read with Leah, who I don't think I even noticed the lovely bookmark and postcard she put in it. That's crazy that I didn't notice it because she's coming to my wedding and we're gonna make a short video doing a discussion of the biography. So I have to read it before I get home to Canada. And it's about 300 pages, so that's going to be another big read. But uh, I'm fascinated. I don't know much about his life, but he was gay. I'm very curious to, to find out more. So that's one of the seven as well. So that would bring me up to five, and I will not be bailing on this one. And I have four more, but I only need... Huh? I only need two more if I'm doing counting right. But I've got four more in reserve. So I'd like to get through, and these are all fairly short. Domenico Starnoni's tie is supposed to be amazing, and I have it, and I'd like to read it. This is a novel from Colombia by Carol Carolina Sanin, The Children, and I featured it in a page 112 tag, was kind of interested in it. It's a beautiful little short little book. I'd like to give it a try. This is a trans novel by an Asian-Canadian trans writer, Small Beauty by Jia King Wilson Yang. I have a feeling I might not end up liking the writing. I've kind of flipped through it, but it's such a beautiful book. I really want to like it, and it's really short, so. And finally, a novel by a gay South African writer, In a Strange Room by Damon Galgut. I read one of his before, The Good Doctor, which was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. I really enjoyed it. It's been years since I read it. I've been collecting his novels ever since, and I would like to give this one a try. Has anybody out there read Damon Galgut? So those are the, some of the books that I hope to. If I read seven of them, I'll be so happy, but let's be realistic. With all I got going on, I may only read two. I may read the, the uh, E.F. Benson biography and one other, but I'm gonna play it by ear and I'm gonna have fun. And I think I'll be vlogging as I go. I think I'll do, do a running vlog throughout the week. Yeah, I'm just kind of pumped. So are you participating in the Booktubeathon this year? I'm looking forward to seeing your TBR videos and seeing your funny hat. Thanks for watching.